my previous lecture we had discussed the consequences of the electron having a magnetic moment which is proportional to the spin angular momentum of the electron. Spin angular momentum is the intrinsic angular momentum of the electron. We will continue our discussion from there, but first we will write down the expression for the magnetic moment for the electron and we had said that this was equal to minus g q by 2 m into s. This is usually a lower case s and this s vector is equal to the spin angular momentum vector which is denoted by half h cross sigma. Now, for the electron for electron the q is the for all particles q is the magnitude of the charge of the electron. So, 1.6 about 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus, minus 19 coulombs. The mass of the electron as we know is about 9.1 into 10 to the power of minus 31 kilograms and the Lande g factor for the electron is about 2 actually in, in most calculations we assume to be 2. Now, exactly in a similar way there is a magnetic moment of the proton and the for the proton. So, we write mu is equal to plus g p q over 2 m p where m p is the mass of the proton times the s vector. So, this also corresponds to half spin angular momentum vector and q is again the same q is again 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs mass of the proton is about 1.673 into 10 to the power of minus 27 kg, but the Lande g factor for the proton is about 5.56. So, the proton also behaves as a tiny magnet having a magnetic moment which is uh, much smaller than that of the electron because the mass of the proton is much smaller, but nevertheless it does have a magnetic moment and if you make a measurement of mu z you will get two quantized values. Similarly, the neutron also has a although neutron is a electrically neutral particle it does not have a charge, but we can assume that qualitatively speaking that there is a distribution of charge which results in a magnetic moment of the neutron and the neutron magnetic moment is actually negative and it is given by the g of the neutron q over 2 m n multiplied by the same s. So, s is once again half h cross sigma q is again the same the magnitude of the electronic charge minus 19 coulombs, but the mass of the neutron is roughly the same as that of the proton, but slightly higher 1.675 into 10 to the power of minus 27 kg and uh, the Lande g factor for the neutron is about 3.83. What I wanted to emphasize is that even the neutron which is electrically neutral has a magnetic moment and if you make a measurement of this magnetic moment it has two possible values corresponding to S z having two eigenvalues plus half h cross and minus half h cross. Now, we will briefly discuss 
that if such a magnet is put in a static magnetic field or if a neutral silver atom which has the magnetic moment of the electron is put in a static magnetic field in a static magnetic field what will be the Hamiltonian and what will be the solution of the Schrodinger equation. So, static magnetic field let us suppose you have a strong magnetic field in the z direction and therefore, the Hamiltonian H 0 as I had mentioned was equal to mu dot b. So, this will be equal to the q by m I am assuming g to be about 2 for the electron q by this is q by 2 m into g. So, g and 2 cancels out into b 0 times half h cross sigma z. So, this is my uh, this is my uh, Hamiltonian this quantity we denote by we denote by omega 0 omega 0. So, omega 0 omega 0 is defined to be equal to q b 0 m and therefore, the Hamiltonian is equal to half h cross omega naught sigma z. This is a constant, so therefore, this is a constant. The eigenvalues of sigma z as you know the sigma z is 1 0 0 minus 1 are plus 1 and minus 1. So, the eigenvalues of h naught are plus half h cross and minus half h cross omega naught. So, my E 1 the two energy states is E 1 is equal to half h cross omega naught and E 2 is equal to minus half h cross omega naught and the two eigen kets are the spin up state the z up state which is I denote by 1 and that is the in a, in, in, a, in terms of a column matrix it is given by 1 0 or the spin down state which I denote by ket 2 which is equal to 0 1. These are the Eigen kets of the Hamiltonian. So, H naught ket 1 is equal to half H cross omega naught ket 1 H naught ket 2 is equal to minus sorry minus half h cross omega naught ket 2. Okay. Now, the time dependent Schrodinger equation is given by i h cross delta by delta t psi of t h naught psi of t. and I can use the separate method of separation of variables and write psi of t is equal to e to the power of minus i e t by h cross psi and we will obtain we will obtain if I substitute this here because h naught is independent of time we will obtain If I substitute this solution in this equation, we will obtain H naught psi is equal to E psi. We already know the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions, eigenkets of H naught, and the two eigenvalues are E is equal to plus minus half H cross omega not and uh, the two eigen kets are ket 1 which is the spin up state and ket 2 which is the spin down state and uh, this is denoted by 1 0 and this is denoted by 0 1. Thus, the, the general solution thus it is obvious that the general solution 
of this equation will be psi of t is equal to c 1 e to the power of minus i e 1 t by h cross ket 1 plus c 2 e to the power of minus i e 2 t by h cross ket 2. Now, this quantity this quantity is equal to so e to the power of minus i e 1 t by h cross e 1 is equal to half h cross omega naught. So, if a h cross h cross cancels out, so this becomes minus i omega naught t by 2 this I represent by e to the power of minus i theta where theta is equal to omega naught t by 2 and e 2 as we know is just minus half h cross omega naught e 2 is equal to minus of e 1. So, instead of e to the power of minus i theta this quantity will become e to the power of plus i theta. Therefore, we will have therefore, we will have psi of t will be equal to c 1 e to the power of minus i theta ket 1 plus c 2 e to the power of i theta ket 2. Now, let us suppose that at t equal to 0 the system is in the state given by this ket psi of 0 is equal to cos phi by 2 sin phi by 2 that is this is equal to it is in a superposed state cos phi by 2 ket 1 that is let me write it down carefully 1 0 plus sin phi by 2 0 1 this is ket 1 and this is ket 2. So, this is equal to cos phi by 2 ket 1 plus sin phi by 2 ket 2. So, we had seen that c 1 at t equal to 0 this factor is 1 and this factor is 1. So, psi of t let me write this down that psi of t equal to 0 was c 1 ket 1 plus c 2 ket 2. So, therefore, c 1 is equal to cos phi by 2 and c 2 is equal to sin phi by 2 and therefore, psi of t if I write this down if I write this down that c 1 is equal to cos phi by 2 cos phi by 2 e to the power of minus i theta ket 1 plus sin phi by 2 e to the power of i theta ket 2 I am sorry ket 2. So, therefore, this becomes this becomes cos phi by 2 e to the power of minus i theta sin phi by 2 e to the power of plus i theta, where theta as I had mentioned was defined to be equal to omega 0 t by 2. Now, this wave function this ket therefore, describes the entire information about the system 
Let us suppose we want to find out what is the expectation value of S x or S y or S z. So, I have here I have here uh, psi of t. So, the I want to make a measurement of S x. So, the S x the average value of S x will be S x is psi of t just we have to do it carefully S x is half h cross sigma x psi of t. So, let me just do this part sigma x psi of t will be equal to sigma x is 0 1 1 0 operating on cos phi by 2 e to the power of minus i theta sin phi by 2 e to the power of i theta. The algebra is trivial. So, this becomes this goes sin phi by 2 e to the power of i theta cos phi by 2 e to the power of minus i theta. Now, I have to now multiply by bra psi t. So, the left hand side will become equal to the bra will be psi t. So, this will be cos cos phi by 2 e to the power of plus i theta sin phi by 2 e to the power of minus i theta conjugate imaginary of this multiplied by sigma x psi t. So, that is equal to sig sin phi by 2 e to the power of i theta cos phi by 2 e to the power of minus i theta. So, if you work this out, so this becomes as you would readily see cos phi by 2 sin phi by 2. So, that is equal to half sin phi because you have sin 2 a is equal to 2 sin a cos a. So, cos phi by 2 sin phi by 2 is half sin phi then e to the power of 2 i theta plus sin phi by 2 cos phi by 2 is again half sin phi e to the power of minus 2 i theta. So, we obtain finally that that the expectation value of sex is if I take sin theta outside. So, this will be e to the power of 2 i theta plus e to the power of minus 2 i theta divided by 2. So, that is cos 2 theta and theta was equal to omega 0 t by 2. So, 2 theta will be cos of omega 0 t. So, this is the expectation value of uh, uh, sigma x. So, sorry this was the expectation value S x. So, this was the I have taken out half h cross. So, I have only calculated the expectation value of sigma x. So, if I multiply by half h cross, so this will be half h cross times this. If I similarly, I leave it as an exercise for you to calculate expectation value of half uh, s y half h cross uh, sin phi sin omega 0 t and this changes with time, but s z you will have 
half h cross cos phi. Notice that whereas Sx and Sy vary with time, Sz does not vary with time. This gives us a classical model for the for the time variation of the of the angular momentum vector. If I denote this by the angular momentum vector and this as my z axis, then the z component is constant. So, if this angle is phi and if this vector precesses about the magnetic field, precesses about the z axis, then this precession is known as the Larmor precession, the Larmor precession. So, you can see that as is as it precesses over the along the z axis, its z component remains the constant. So, you have th th this is the my uh, s vector the z component is half h cross sin phi cos phi and if I project it on the x axis then the the projection on the x y plane will be half h cross sin phi which will rotate which will rotate in the x y plane with angular frequency omega 0. So, this is a classical model to explain this uh, these three equations and this precision is known as the Larmor precision and in fact, classically also one obtains the same result. We conclude this part by mentioning that in addition to the we have this constant magnetic field. So, in addition in addition to the constant magnetic field that is B is equal to B 0 which is in the z direction. Let us suppose we have in the x y plane a rotating magnetic field B 1 cos omega t and, and B y is equal to B 1 sin omega t. So, this is known as a rotating radio frequency field rotating R f field radio frequency field. Then we, we can similarly with in the presence of this we can again write down the Hamiltonian minus mu dot b, but in this case the, the Hamiltonian itself will be time dependent, but it is a two state problem. It is really a very straightforward problem. It is uh, solved in, uh, in our book by myself and uh, Professor Lokanathan and uh, I leave it as an exercise, it is a very nice exercise. I would like you to show that the, the C 1 t mod square comes out to be cos square gamma t the coefficient. You see we write the solution as psi of t is equal to C 1 of t. Now, he, here you will have the the coefficients will change with time because the Hamiltonian itself is a time dependent quantity. So, C 1 of t ket 1 plus C 2 of t ket 2. So, then you will find that mod C 1 square t will cos square gamma t plus delta square gamma square multiplied by sin square gamma t and the final result is C 2 of t mod square is equal to omega 1 square. by gamma square sin square gamma t, where delta is equal to half into omega minus omega 0, half into omega minus omega 0. Just let me check this uh, and uh, So, this is B 1. So, and uh, and gamma is equal to delta square plus omega 1 square. 
So, when delta is 0, capital delta is 0, omega is equal to omega 0. So, this becomes 0 and this becomes 1. And so, therefore, C 1 t mod square becomes cos square gamma t and C 2 mod t square becomes sin square gamma t. And there is a periodic flipping of spin and each time the spin flips it absorbs a certain amount of energy from the radio frequency field. And this flip flipping of the spin allows us to determine either the magnetic moment of the substance of the proton or, or, or of the uh, molecule and uh, or the strength of the magnetic field. In fact, this principle is used not only in, in, in nuclear magnetic resonance techniques and also in the electron spin resonance techniques. So, in this experiment what we have is a constant static magnetic field in the z direction and a rotating magnetic field in the x y plane. We then write down the Hamiltonian and solve it, but here it is one of those unique cases in which the Hamiltonian itself depends on time. So, therefore, we write down the solution as C 1 of t ket 1 plus C 2 of 2 t ket 2 and substitute it in the Schrodinger equation and and obtain a set of coupled equations between C 1 and C 2. It is possible to solve this equation rigorously and it is a rigorously one obtains a rigorously correct solution for this two state problem. And one finds that at a particular frequency when omega is equal to omega naught, the, 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 the spin flips for certainty. And, and when that happens, it absorbs a certain amount of energy from the radio frequency field, which can be observed, which can be very accurately observed. This allows us to find out the magnetic moment of the, of the proton or the molecule that we are trying to measure. And hence, uh, one can one can determine the concentration of the type of particles or the proton distribution that we are looking even inside the human body. And this phenomenon is known as the nuclear magnetic resonance techniques and has found extremely widespread application in medicine and also other areas. So, therefore, we have, con we have considered two simple cases one in which there is a uh, static magnetic field and we demonstrated the Larmor precision and then we just outlined the solution and gave it as a problem when we have in addition to a static, static magnetic field a magnetic field in the uh, a rotating radio frequency field in the x y plane. Now, we will conclude our uh, analysis of the operator algebra by deriving the expressions for the spherical harmonics. Now, you see uh, we had while discussing the, the um, let me write it down the we had not when we considered the theory of angular momentum we had not derived expressions for spherical harmonics. What we did find out was that that the L square operator the eigenfunctions we denoted by y L m theta phi and we showed that for L equal to for m equal to 0 that that y first of all we showed that y L m theta phi could be written as f l of theta phi of phi 
and this we had shown was equal to 1 over root 2 pi e to the power of i m phi and for the and for the eigen function to be well uh, to be single valued m can take the value 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 etcetera. Then we had shown we had also we we did not derive the expression for f l of theta, but we did say that for m equal to 0 that uh, the the uh, m equal to 0 the function l of theta for m equal to 0 was some multiple of p l the Legendre polynomials. Now, as you may recollect that we had derived the operators the differential operators for l x l y and l z l x was equal to i h cross sin phi delta by delta theta plus cot theta cos phi delta by delta phi l y is equal to i h cross minus cos phi delta by delta theta plus cot theta sin phi delta by delta phi and we had from first principles also derived that L z the differential operator representation was delta by delta phi. Now, these obviously satisfy the same commutation relations that is L x comma L y is equal to I L z and then L x also L square comma l x is 0. So, using these just these commutation relations we had found that j square the eigenvalues are j into j plus 1 h cross square j m and j z these are simultaneous eigenkets of j square and j z and so therefore, since in this particular case since m takes integer values. So, the Eigen values of l square must be and we denote the Eigen functions by y l m theta phi must be equal to l into l plus 1 h cross square because m now we have shown that m takes only integer values or 0. So, the eigenvalues of l square must be equal to this times y l m theta phi, where l now takes 0, 1, 2, 3, etcetera. Now, what are the expressions for y l m? For that, we proceed as follows. First of all, we note that y l m theta phi the phi dependence f l of theta this is the theta dependence and the phi dependence is 1 over root 2 pi e to the power of i m phi and m goes from minus l to plus l and l can take values 0, 1, 2, 3 etcetera. Now, from this equation from this equation we can write down sorry l plus and l minus that is I can write down l plus which is l x plus i l l i l y or l minus let me write down l minus i leave it as an exercise for you to find out l x plus 
i l y. So, l minus let us do it little carefully l x minus i l y minus i l y. So, this will be sin phi minus minus plus i cos phi. So, I will have let me write it down below that sin phi plus i cos phi. So, if I take outside i, so I get cos phi minus i sin phi. So, this will be i times e to the power of minus i phi. So, you will have, so, so if I take i outside, so where, where is the, sorry. So, you will have l minus will be l minus will be l x minus i l phi. So, you will have i h cross i e to the power of minus i phi delta by delta theta plus plus cot theta cos phi minus i sin phi. So, cot theta e to the power of minus i phi delta by delta phi. If I take i inside, so this will be equal to h cross. If I, I can assume a system of units where h cross is 1, so I will have h cross e to the or I, I am sorry I can take e to the power of minus i phi also outside. So, h cross e to the power of minus i phi if I take outside. So, i times i is minus 1 minus delta by delta theta plus i times cot theta delta by delta phi. Okay. Now, L minus Y L when M is minus L, we had this relation that J minus J M is under root of J plus M. m cannot be less than minus l and also from this relation l j plus m will be l minus l that should be 0. So, this operating on this will be 0. So, l minus operating on y l minus l must be 0. Okay. So, therefore, this is just a factor. So, I can neglect this and you must remember that. So, let me write it down again. Let me write it down again. So, therefore, minus delta by delta theta of y l comma minus l plus i cot theta delta by delta phi y l minus l is equal to 0. But we know that y l comma minus l is equal to f l theta 1 over under root of 2 pi 
e to the power of i m phi m is minus l so minus i l phi so this tells us that if i differentiate this with respect to theta so you get d f l by d theta with a minus sign and if I differentiate this, so this would be i times minus i is plus 1, so plus 1 l times cot theta f l of theta is equal to 0 and this root 2 pi and this factor cancels from both the terms. I hope this is clear. So, I take this to the other side. So, the minus sign minus sign goes on. So, 1 over f l theta d f l by d theta is equal to l cos theta by sin theta. So, if I integrate this log of f l theta is equal to L of log of sin theta plus a constant. So, this is log sin theta to the power of L. So, therefore, we get the relation that f L theta is equal to constant times sin to the power of L theta. You can find out the normalization constant and the normalization constant is that the f l theta is some constant times sin to the power of l theta, where the determination of normalization constant is slightly tedious, but let me give you the final result 2 to the power of l l factorial 2 l plus 1 factorial by 2 raised to the power of half. So, my y l, so let me put it as c l comma minus l theta phi is equal to c l sin l theta multiplied by 1 by root 2 pi e to the power of minus i l phi. We have therefore, a complete expression for y l comma minus l. Now, I can now use ladder operators to find out higher uh, y other spherical harmonics. For example, for example, L plus as you know J m, J L plus a L comma m as you know is equal to L minus m L plus m plus 1 L comma m plus 1. So, L plus y l comma m is equal to under root of this thing y l m and that will be automatically normalized. So, therefore, if I know for example, y 1 comma minus 1, then I can using this relation l plus y comma minus 1 will give me something like y comma 1 comma 0. 
So, I hope I have been able to tell you a very nice method for obtaining without solving any differential equation. You tell me the value of L, you tell me the value of M and just by doing a series of operator algebra, I can find out different spherical harmonics. As a simple example, you get y 1 minus 1 that is L is 1, L is 1 and M is minus 1. So, you have here, so C times sin to the power of L theta that is sin theta 1 over root 2 pi e to the power of minus i phi. You can immediately calculate the value of C and the final result is 3 by 8 pi sin theta e to the power of minus i phi. Now, you have L plus y mi 1 minus 1. So, this will be equal to j minus m. So, this will be so this will be equal to under root of 2 if you substitute the values and this will be equal to y comma 1 0 because you have j minus m will be 1 minus minus 1 that is 2 and j plus m plus 1 that will be just 1. So, y 1 comma 0 will be 1 over root 2 L plus and the L plus operator is e to the if I assume e to the power of i phi delta by delta theta plus i cot theta delta by delta phi operating on y 1 minus 1. So, this is under root of 3 by 8 pi sin theta e to the power of minus i phi. So, I differentiate this with respect to theta, I differentiate this with respect to phi. It is a very simple algebra and once you do that, you will get under root of 3 by 4 pi cos theta. And you can see that you will have e to the power of minus i phi here and e to the power of i phi. So, there will be no phi dependence and this should this you should have expected because m is 0. So, you will have just this and this is proportional to P L of cos theta, P 1 of cos theta, P 1 p 1 of cos theta is just cos theta. What, what I am trying to tell you is that, that in fact, there is another formula y l comma 0 we have, which we have said that this was constant times p l of cos theta multiplied by I think the under this factor is 2 l plus 1 by 2 into 1 over root 2 pi e to the power of m is 0. So, this is the so y 1 comma 0 is equal to 3 by 4 pi 3 by 4 pi. So, 2 l plus 1 is 3 into 2 into 2 pi is 4 pi and that is cos theta. Now, I can immediately write down what is y comma 1. So, L plus y 1 comma 1 sorry 1 comma 0 is under root of j minus m. So, that is 1 and that is square root of 2 again and then j plus m plus 1 that is true. So, this is equal to y 1 the m value has to increase by 1. So, y 1 comma 1 is equal to 1 over root 
2 1 over root 2 and L plus operator is e to the power of i phi delta by delta theta plus i cot theta delta by delta phi this is the this is the L plus operator that is L plus which is equal to L x plus I L y this operating on y 1 0. So, this is 3 by 4 pi cos theta. Since this is independent of phi, so this term is 0, there is no phi dependent term here and cos theta will become sin minus sin theta and there will be a e to the power of i phi. So, this will give me an expression for y 1 1 and the final expression will be just let me look at the book and uh, uh, this will be just one second. So, y 1 1 will be equal to minus under root of 3 by 8 pi sin theta into e to the power of i phi. Notice that so plus 1. So, since m is 1, so you will get this sin e to the power of i phi and there is a minus sign. Now, similarly you can start with y 2 minus 2 theta phi, I can write down immediately this thing, this will be some constant sin of L theta that is sin square of theta, this is the theta dependence and then the phi dependence is 1 over root 2 pi e to the power of minus i 2 phi. So, now you operate this by L plus operator L plus y 2 minus 2 will be equal to y 2 minus 2 is L is equal to 2 and m is equal to minus 2, L minus m is L minus m will be 4 and then L plus m plus 1, so that is 1. This into y 2 minus 1, so y 2 minus 1 will be equal to 1 over 2 square root of 4 is L plus, L plus is e to the power of i phi delta by delta theta plus i times cot theta delta by delta phi and then the whole thing sin square theta c times you have to find out the constant into 1 over root 2 pi e to the power of minus i 2 phi and so on. So, you just differentiate this you get expressions for y 2 minus 1 comes out to be comes out to be let me write down the answer 15 by 8 pi sin theta cos theta e to the power of minus i phi. So, I have told you the recipe you start with you for any value any given value of l you start with y l comma minus l. So, this will be c sin to the power of l theta and then the phi dependence will be 1 over root 2 pi e to the power of minus i l phi and then keep on applying ladder operator this is the convention this always has a plus sign and then you do this as the number of l values become in larger it of course it becomes more cumbersome but in principle it is very straightforward you use continuously the ladder operators and find out why uh, l l minus l plus 1 and so on so, if you start with y 3 minus 3, then you land up with y 3 minus 2, then you land up with y 3 minus 1 and then y 3 0, 
and then y 3 1 and y 3 2 and 2 and y 3 3. So, you will be able to get rigorously correct expressions with the appropriate sign appropriately normalized all that you have to continuously use are the, 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 the these equations that L plus minus y L, y L m is equal to under root of L minus plus m L plus minus m plus 1 y L m plus 1 for the upper sign minus 1 for the other. In our next lecture what we will do is we will add angular momentum momenta. We will consider two angular momentum vectors j 1 and j 2 j 2. We will assume that the components of j 1 commute with components of j 2 and then we will add these two angular momentum vectors. For example, if we have two spin half particles if you have neutron and electron and a proton then or the neutron and a proton both are spin half particles. So, these two form a total angular momentum which is 1 or 0. The first one is called a triplet state and the second one is called a singlet state. So, we will develop the theory of addition of angular momentum and which lead to the concept of the Klebsch-Gordon coefficients. Thank you. Thank you.